My friends, we're going to evaluate e to the x times cos of x using my favorite method. We normally do this using integration by parts twice, which is a little tricky, but my favorite way is to sub in Euler's formula. Now, hang in here with me. <laughs> uh, hang in. I know that there's i, an imaginary number here, but trust me, this integral becomes very easy to do. Cos x is the real part of e to the i x. So e to the i x is all of this. This is the imaginary part. This is the real part. So if we substitute that in, we're going to solve for the real part of the integral of e to the x, e to the i x dx. And this is really cool because we can merge these powers together by adding the exponents. And this integral is a lot easier than this one. We can evaluate this right away, right off the hop. So it is e to the 1 plus i x divided by 1 plus i plus c. c is our integration constant. Now we have to deal with this real part. So we're going to sub back Euler's formula to get our coses and sines part right here. Now we want the real portion of this. Uh, how do we do that? Well, we put it in the form of a plus bi, where a is the real part, b is the imaginary part. So to get this fraction into this form right here, we need to get rid of the denominator. And to do that, we will multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. Now, knowing that i equals the square root of negative 1, so i squared equals negative 1, if we expand and foil out the brackets here and simplify, what we get is e to the x divided by 2 times cos x plus sine x, which is our real part, plus this is the imaginary part, sine x i minus cos x i. What we care about is the real part, this a right here. And that, my friends, is it. So a lot less work than integration by parts. You can check that video out if you want to see how it's done. Good luck on your midterms, your final exams, and all that. The more integrals you do, the better you'll get. You can survive.